Hi guys, it's Kira here, and this is the second video I'm teaching you about Adobe SpeedGrade with the old interface. Remembering that in June of 2013, SpeedGrade is going to come out with a brand new UI, and we'll probably do some more videos around then. So remember we had the project here where we've got two clips, we already deleted one clip because we knew that it didn't uh, import very well and in a future video we're going to show you how you can get around that. Now one of the main things that I wanted to teach you guys today is the importance of saving your work because although SpeedGrade has an autosave, it's not the kind of autosave that you think. Now there might be ways to work around this that I haven't discovered yet but one thing I did discover is that when you close SpeedGrade and open it up again, it saves your workspace, which is really handy. But if you close it and then open a new workspace, like a second project, if you didn't save your first project, you've lost all your work. So now it's really important to remember to save. So if you're in the first tab here, timeline, down the bottom, save IRCP. Now you remember that IRCP is the default format for project files within SpeedGrade. The dialog box will show you locations you can save it. And uh, you can see here that I've already saved uh, the original one which is when I exported it from Premiere Pro over to SpeedGrade. This one here is one that I made when I did a test on the saving before. So you can see that it's actually incrementing it each time. What I'll do is I'll click that first one and I'll go save. It's going to say, do you want to replace it? And we'll go yes. Let's just check that by going save IRCP once again. And you'll see that in the folder now, it's created V1 and V2, which is the save that I just did before. So that's great if you want to uh, keep track of changes within your project. But we'll cancel that because we just did a save. Okay, we've done some basic color correction here, uh, as you saw in the first video. And of course, you can hold down the zero key on the number pad on your keyboard to see the before and release it to see the after. Now, these aren't very pretty. This isn't what you'd usually have in a project. Um, but that'll do for today. If you need to, you can use the waveform and histogram and the vector scope to really get full control of your work. And there are so many more features for look and masking and vignettes that you can add to it, but that's up to you to experiment with. We're going to look at the basics here. And so one of the basics you want to know is how can I get my work from SpeedGrade back to Premiere Pro? Up in the top here, if you click the button that says output, it presents a rather weird looking uh, output uh, window. Along the top here, you've got the file path of where your render is gonna go. Um, what we did is we had our hard drive, we had a folder called SpeedGrade Tutorial, and there are subfolders inside it, but we're not gonna use those, we just wanna put it in the root of that folder. Everything else here, I'm gonna leave as it is because it all looks pretty good. We're gonna use square pixels, we want full resolution. And down the bottom here, you've got online quality or offline quality. Now, if you want to just do a little preview of what your work is going to look like, maybe you need to show a producer, then you can go offline and it'll render much faster. But if you go online, this is designed for the finished product where you're going to export it out of SpeedGrade to Premiere Pro. So now that we've got that selected, let's click render. And you'll see the progress here as it renders along. We haven't got a lot of frames, so it's not going to take very long, only a minute or a couple of minutes. And once it's done, it'll let us know. And if we wanted to pause it or stop it, we've got those options there. Okay, the rendering's finished. We've quit SpeedGrade and we've opened up Premiere Pro again. So double click in the project window so that you get the import dialog and we're gonna locate the DPX files that we rendered. So here we are in the SpeedGrade tutorial folder where I rendered them out and you can see that we've got all these files here with the DPS extension. Click the first one and then check image sequence so that it imports it all as one clip. We click import and you can see down here in the project we've now uh, got the clip with a bit of black in the middle which we're going to look at shortly and if we scrub over to the right you'll see the seagull, scrub over to the left you'll see the people on the cliff. We're going to drag this video in and put it onto video 2 so that it sits above the original clip. And because we didn't move any of the video clips within SpeedGrade, they've all located themselves in the right position. So here we go, here's our friend the seagull, now looking a little bit more colourful, a little bit warmer. And our people on the cliff, also looking a little bit warmer. And you can see the difference that you've made by turning off the visibility for video 2. 
If we uncheck the I and you'll see the original video one showing through. And everything looks a lot uh, colder and the blacks are deeper. And when we enable the visibility, you can see that the day looks decidedly warmer for the people on the cliff. But in the middle, in our second clip, which we had problems with, we've only got black. Well, that's because when we exported the DPX files out of SpeedGrade, the clip that was non-existent didn't process as being in transparent alpha, it appeared as black, which is something that you want to be aware of. Now, there's a few ways around it. We could always splice it. If we click the splice tool here, click splice on video 2 and locate the end of that clip which is right about there splice it again and then you could delete that clip from video 2 so that the original video from video track number 1 shows through and then that would solve our problem and it would show you the original clip but it hasn't really given us any creative control over this video clip so in the next video, we're going to show you how you can transfer clips from Premiere Pro over to SpeedGrade without using the Send to Adobe SpeedGrade tool. It might help you out sometimes when you've got clips that don't behave the way that they should. And then in future videos, we're going to look at dealing with dissolves between clips and how you can color correct those.